Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another Board to Naruto Next Generation discussion on the Fallout from Board to Chapter 79. And today, I want to shift gears a bit and I want to focus on Sumire likely being immune from the effects of Ada Shinjutsu, where everyone's memory of who Boruto is has been wiped away, and everyone thinks that Kawaki is Naruto's son and Boruto is the killer of Naruto and Hinata. Because we discussed how Sasuke might remember who Boruto is and why Sarda and Sumire together as a team are important for Boruto. Boruto's future and for taking out Ada, I wanted to do what we did for Sasuke and Sarda individually and discuss why Sumire is likely immune from the effects of Ada's Shinjutsu. For the reason behind this, we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to look at the narrative reason and the foreshadowing as well as look at any Japanese and Asian folklore, Japanese and Asian religion, or Japanese and Asian mythology that applies to situation, as well as evidence from the manga that supports any of these things. And I'm going to say right now, there's actually a lot of Asian stories and Asian mythology that applies to Sumire being immune here. So let's start with the obvious. So far, we have not seen Sumire be immune to the effects of Ada Shinjutsu because we have not seen her since the Shinjutsu was fully casted. We saw her when it was in the process of being used, but not fully completed. So we can't say definitively that she's immune to Ada Shinjutsu like Sarda, but I think we're all in agreement that none of us will be shocked if she is. It just fits the pattern of what we had so far. So what are the possible reasons for this well the least sexy answer is the one that none of us in the fandom or i should say most of us in the fandom would likely agree isn't the one we're too keen on which is the whole idea of ada's control power doesn't work on sarda and sumari because they're both potentially in love or have strong feelings for boruto which cancel it out likely because he's 100 otsuski however now that we got that huge elf in the room out of the way let's look at the other aspects starting with the new way connection which i think has a lot of weight to it. In the Boruto manga, we haven't seen Nui, but we know that Nui exists in the Boruto manga because of the character profile for Sumire. Nui is listed as her summoning. Now, that connection with Nui could lead to a loophole to blocking her from Ada Shinjutsu because we all know about that creation of Nui. Nui started out as a weapon that Donzo and Root created that was made with Hashirama cells as the focal point, but we know based off of Sasuke's words, to Naruto that he was surprised that Donzo had come as close as he did to something related to Kaguya. Once he saw the scroll with the Gozo Tenno and Nue on it, implying that the Gozo Tenno and Nue was something that Kaguya had prepared on her own and that Donzo came very close to replicating it, this cannot be taken lightly at all. While it's not exactly the same thing, it's pretty darn close, which makes sense given Teneri a literal Otsuski was worried about Nue. Sumire having that connection with Nue might result in immunity yeah, since we know new way exists in the manga due to those profiles and we do have ikimoto kodachi and some of the boards or anime writers saying years ago that the anime and manga run parallel to each other and are linked i think you could go that route however assuming that we do let's look at the mythology that inspired new way from design to some of its powers and how it relates to sumire being immune and how Nui ties into some of the Hiei Imperial stuff that Boruto and Kawaki are currently replicating in their story arc. So, as we talked about in the past, Naruto series creator Masashi Kishimoto has borrowed from various different Japanese time periods, including a lot of stuff from the Hiei Imperial of Japan, which in a video a few days ago, I discussed how Boruto and Kawaki's situation mirrored the stories from the Hiei era, in particular the stories with the Minamoto clan, where the son of an important official in the Minamoto clan was driven driven into exile and the man who was adopted into a ruling family committed betrayal and had that son hunted down a la Boruto being the son of the Hokage is in exile and Kawaki the adopted child is having Boruto hunted down. Well when we look into the Hiei period we have the links between Nui and one of the members of the Minamoto clan just as we currently have Boruto a descendant of Minato whose name is a play off of the Minamoto clan and we have Boruto the son of a pretty big official in the Hokage just as the Minamoto clan's son is linked to Boruto. Nui is also linked to Sumire. In the story, there's this powerful illness that has befallen, and there's no medicine or prayers to the gods that can cure it. However, it was after Nui was killed that the skies are split, and the illness that had befallen had instantly been cured. Right now, we don't have an illness, but we do have a powerful Shinjutsu that affects the mind in the way that an illness would that has no known reversal right now. We haven't been told how to reverse Ada's Shinjutsu, which is important to keep in mind. Nui being a key to the immunity of Sumire plays a role who will end up 
playing a role in the reverse of Ada Shinjutsu that could be at work here, particularly because Shikamaru set it up a while back in the manga that Ada was to be taken down by Sarda and Sumire. The new way connection makes more sense when you consider some of the other stories surrounding it. Going a step further, like we discussed in the Boruto and Kawaki video, Kawaki in particular gives off the vibes of that man who was adopted by the prominent clan and pushed the kid from the Minamoto clan into exile. The clan in particular was the Taiara clan. This is important because Nue also happens to have a story linking it both to the Minamoto clan, which we just went over, as well as the Taiara clan, which again, Boruto and Kawaki's stories and situations seem to be drawing from. In the one dealing with the Taiara clan, Nue ends up dying in the story, just like the one from the Minamoto clan, but in this one, Nue ends up coming back to life as a guardian. In another one of the stories, Jizo ends up giving an arrow that's used to kill Nue. Jizo's one of the beings that's associated with the Sainakawa stories, which just happened to inspire Amado's last name, Sanzu, which is how we predicted here on the channel months in advance that he was trying to use Kawaki to get his dead daughter back to life because the Sainakawa and the souls of the dead children in limbo in the afterlife fit with Amado saying that he once had a daughter that died 12 years ago. And because of that connection, I don't think we can overlook it. And let's go even further here. Amado and Sumire have not necessarily been on the best terms in the manga. There's been some open conflict between the two of them. So future conflict between these two isn't out of the question, especially if Sumire sees Amado, knows that Kawaki has done what he's done by using Ada and continues to go along with it out of the hopes of getting his daughter back. Again, Amado and that connection to Jizo and the Sainakawa, that makes a lot of sense. And given that Jizo gave the weapon that ended up being used to kill Nui, that would explain why you would have Amado and Sumire having some type of conflict between the two of them, even if Sumire keeps their intents hidden. However, let's take the Nui connection even further here. When the Gozo Tenno ceiling jutsu was made by Donzo in Root, this was specifically what Sasuke looked at and was alarmed at as being too close to Kaguya. According to Boruto novel number five, the Gozo Tenno seal has the ability to serve as a gateway to the dimension where Nui was born, and Sumire has this seal on her palm currently. Now, this is where the alarm should be going off in a good way. Gozo Tenno is a Japanese deity, so we have more of the Masashi Kishimoto checklist filled out. The Heian period links to both Boruto and Kawaki stories, mirroring the Heian era Minamoto clan and the guy adopted by the Taiara clan, and the link to the deity who is linked to Amato, and now Sumire's seal is linked to a Japanese deity as well. All the boxes are checked here. So what exactly stands out about the Gozo Tenno when you start looking into it? Well, it's a deity that has links to disease and healing, which we link to in the New Age story dealing with that seemingly incurable illness, which we can mirror to Ada Shinjutsu. Gozo Tenno has a link of agglomation with the Susano, which just happens to be a deity that the Uchiha clan's Mangekyo Sharingan's third power is inspired by, and Sarda in the future is going Going to have a Mangekyo because we've already seen Masashi Kishimoto design her Mangekyo Sharingan back in 2015 in one of the last drawings that he ever did for anything Boruto related. And now Sarda and Sumire seem to be the only humans who are immune to Ada Shinjutsu other than herself and Kawaki for obvious reasons. Another thing about the Gozo Tenno is that it's linked with the concept of protection. Just as in that story about Nue from the Taiara clan, which again is Kawaki, Nue was killed and used as a protection protector at one point in that story. The idea that the seal that Donzo had Root create, which by extension includes Nue, came dangerously close to Kage is a huge thing to consider given what we've gone over so far. Nue in one story being the cause of an incurable illness being lifted and the Gozo Tenno more than once in stories being used to do away with disease and misfortune and deadly spirits and having a link to Susano, which is a Japanese deity. I think when we look at this, we can start seeing why Sumire might be immune via new way and that seal on her hand due to the combination of all these breadcrumbs and the connector tissues that we have here. The only thing that worries me a bit is that when you dig into these stories, a running theme that you see is death. And that's important to keep in mind and here's why. I don't think any of us expect Sumire to die. And I've said before, Masashi Kishimoto doesn't always retell these stories beat for beat and oftentimes mixes things up to fit into the story that's being told into the manga. But we do have Momoshiki's line that those who are immune tend to suffer the most and the goals Tenno being used to turn around misfortune, which Boruto is definitely enduring right now. If this ain't misfortune, I don't know what is. And both Nue and the Gozo Tenno being used to reverse illness, 
list, which we can compare a to Shinjutsu 2, it's something that makes you wonder if there's going to be a sacrifice along the way at some point, especially given that Sada and Sumire appear to be linked to working together to deal with Ada, and Sada right now is currently missing Susano because she hasn't awakened the Mangekyo in both of her eyes to awaken that power yet, and traditionally, Mangekyo comes at the expense of losing a loved one. Could that loved one end up being Sasuke? Could we see Sasuke die for the sake of Sada, gaining Mangekyo and the Susano to go along with Sumire's Nue and Gozo Tenno connection, with Sasuke dying being the death in place of Nue that exists in the stories of Nue surrounding the Minamoto clan and then the Taiara clan? That could be something that works as a substitute, but as a Sasuke fan, I definitely hate to see it, but that is why I said the more you dig into these stories and you see the running trend of death, it makes the most sense unless you think Masashi Kishimoto has the balls to kill off Sumire, which I don't think is going to be the case. That being said, I'm curious to know how you guys make out of this. I honestly think we have one here. There is enough mythology and religious stuff linked to Nue, which we know is in the manga character profile. If we get the reveal that Nue or the Gozo Tenno are part of why Sumire is immune and she ends up playing a role in undoing Ada Shinjutsu, it won't shock me. It won't shock me even further if we find out that like the romance angle is something that plays a role in it as well. And Sarda and Sumire just happen to check off all those other boxes, the Susano, the Nue connection, the Gozo Tenno seal, but those things don't end up playing a role in actually taking down Ada, but they do themselves. That necessarily is not going to shock me if we end up leaning into the romance angle and that's why they're immune and that ends up just being them checking off the boxes and that's never further explored because that's happened in the past with Naruto's writing. Mythology or folklore, etc. gets introduced to certain characters and it never goes any further than they just check off some of the representative boxes, but it doesn't necessarily play into the story arc that they're part of. Again, when you read Samurai 8 and you see how much romance played a role in that story as well, I can kind of see how all those things fit together and, and it's very convenient that the two love interests have those things that tie them together. In hindsight, I gotta say this actually makes makes Donzo getting this close to Kagi Otsusuki that much more impressive. However, if you enjoyed this video, click here to watch this other Naruto Explained video.